Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today we're going to be looking at uh, my updated Letterman Charge Collection. So a lot of these you could get mainstream, but then there are some of these that are special edition models, namely the four that are here on the bottom, that are a little tougher to get your hands on. Now there is one other that is released in the second generation that I didn't acquire, and that is the Damascus version, the... Uh, I think it was a titanium Damascus is what it was. So it was blued and then it had Damascus blades or something like that. So it was a really nice looking multi-tool as well. But nonetheless, this is my collection of 10. So there is one missing of the second generation. Now, most of the charges uh, are going to be in your standard charge. So this is the standard Leatherman charge. comes with aluminum scales. The great thing about the charge is that it is an update for or an upgraded version of the Leatherman Wave, if you will. So if you're familiar with the Leatherman Wave, then this is just going to be the better version. So a couple things that are different. First of all, in this particular one, it's going to come with 154CM main blade as opposed to the 428C that you'll find in most uh, Leatherman multi-tools, including the Leatherman Wave. Uh, on the exterior, the other tools are going to be kind of the same. Uh, the saw and the file are going to be identical. So you have your diamond file, edge file, crosscut file. And then the one thing that's going to be, or actually be the second thing that's different uh, for the outside tools is the fact that the serrated blade comes with the uh, gut hook as well. This is something I always liked about the charge. I remember when I used to carry a charge, uh, a part well when I carried a wave I would carry a, a charge kind of as my away from work multi-tool if you will uh, a little classier a little just a little better multi-tool in general and I always got a lot of use out of that little hook blade and I wish they would do something like this with the surge or a number of other multi-tools that they have because that's a that's a really great little addition to the full serrated blades that they could do on a lot of other different models as well. One other thing with these is that located on these, and this may be difficult to see, you might be able to see it, but on the outside tools for the Leatherman chargers, they have phosphor bronze washers. So it's an oversized washer that really makes opening the knife blades or actually all the interior tools uh, a lot smoother. You especially feel it in the knife blades when you compare it to a wave. Now the wave does open easily, but it's just that little extra premium thing that they do on a Leatherman charge. So the regular one has aluminum scales in black with stainless steel tooling. We open it up and we have the needle nose, regular pliers, uh, hard wire and wire, wire cutters and hard wire cutters that are replaceable. On the back of the pliers, which doesn't work that great in the charge because of the scales, they kind of tend to get in the way a little bit. But you have a wire crimper that came out when they jumped to uh, this particular plier set for the wave and charge. Now on the interior tools, uh, you also have... let's close this up just a bit you also have a ruler uh, that goes from uh, to eight inches or I think it's 19 centimeters so I get a lot of use out of mine for measuring bolts and stuff on my Leatherman Surge uh, there are other multi-tools that have these on the outside uh, the Swiss tool comes to mind which is really great because it's it's because of the way the Swiss tool is made it just uh it's easier to read on the outside and I think probably would be a little bit more useful that way. But nonetheless, they do have the ruler on there. So for the interior tools, we're not just going to fan these out. You guys are probably pretty familiar, pretty familiar with these. So you have the scissors, the little micro driver, which is reversible, has a little a flat blade or flat driver. And then I believe that's a, I think it's a triple aught uh, Phillips driver on the other side. And then you have your quarter inch uh, flat driver or doubles as a light duty pry tool as well. And then on the opposite side, you have your bit exchanger, which does come with a, this is a 3 16 flat, and then you flip it around, and that is your combo number one, number two Phillips on the other side, and you can set them in there either way. And then the last tool is going to be the combination tool, which is pretty prevalent in a lot of Leatherman tools. This is your can opener, bottle cap lifter, and down here is the wire stripper, which you've watched some of my other videos. Uh, I do wire stripping. I actually use that tool quite a bit uh, on the Leatherman Surge and the Wave whenever I have it with me. And I actually get a lot of use out of that particular tool because I do a lot of little electrical repairs on 
on a lot. Most of it's going to be like 12 volt wiring for, for trailers and stuff like that. But I do get a lot of use out of that. So this is the Leatherman Charge. And I don't think I got that closed up right or something. What am I do here? Oh, I didn't get that driver set all the way back down. And it was hitting the the little stand out there. So now it closes up very nicely. I always have like the Leatherman Charge. I wish that they made a premium version of the Surge like they do a premium version of the Wave. That would be fantastic. Now, the next more co most common one, uh, well, I don't know. These are getting more and more common, but uh, generally what used to be with the Charge, you got the aluminum version or you get the titanium version. I always like the titanium version. It's a bit heavier. Uh, but it's a little nicer too. Oh, by the way, uh, on the on these tools, the charge models come with, and this is a black oxide that went with this one, but uh, you can get it in regular stainless too. Uh, if you hit the cover or hit the tool release here, this actually slips in there and makes for a very nice deep carry pocket clip. That's something that you get a little extra with the charges as well as... I think it's a 10 piece bit kit that comes with them. You don't get the full set bit kit uh, from, from Leatherman, but you do get a variety of bits. Now the titanium charge is really nice. Again, I was saying it's a little bit heavier, but it also comes with a little better blade. So this one is the S30V blade. And those are the two premium blades that Leatherman uses. Now by today's standards with some of the more uh, you know elaborate knife steels that are out there, uh, S30V is really not considered premium anymore, uh, but it's still a pretty good blade steel. I actually prefer the 154 CM. It's a it's a good blade steel for a multi tool. It also is a little bit easier to sharpen back up than the S30V, though the S30V will last a bit longer between sharpenings. Uh, I just kind of prefer the 154 CM. It's kind of to each their own when it comes to knife blade steels. And then the remainder of the tools on this one are going to be exactly the same as what we found in the regular Leatherman charge. So we'll just open them up right here. The only difference is the scaling on this one is going to be in titanium. Now, one other key difference with this particular tool is that they include a small crimper up the front of the pliers. Now, I remember I actually carried a couple different versions of the charges and I had tried to carry a titanium version. Back then it was called the TI and uh i always found that little crimper that really just got in my way i never i never really liked it being in the pliers like that seemed like at the most uh inopportune times that it would just be in my way so nonetheless it's a nice little tool to have on there uh for those that need it but for me it was it was more troublesome than what it was worth then we get into some of the, uh, well, let's get into the G10s. So this particular one, well, let's go how in order that they came out. So the first one, oh, excuse me, it was this one. The, the first one was the orange scale G10 version. Now this came out from, or, or it was, you could get it at Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop because Bass Pro Shops bought out Cabela's. And Cabela's, for those that know a little history about Leatherman was actually the first vendor that started selling uh, or the first yeah the first vendor that, that, that took an order from Leatherman uh, that's how Leatherman tool group actually got started was on that first order and they sold out very quickly became very popular and Leatherman just went up from there now the GTN models I will say that the handles on here, uh, let's just open them up. They, they got a little flex to them. So they're not quite as stiff as obviously the aluminum or the titanium, but they have a nice feel to them. Uh, they, that grippy G10, that texture that they put on there is just really nice. One thing they did with these models is they have the S30V blade on here. And again, the other interior tools are identical. Now, when we get into some of these others, the, for whatever reason, there's a couple of charge models that don't actually include the hook blade. I don't really know why that is. Uh, but apart from that, apart from the scales, it's really the same thing as the aluminum version, except it has the S30V blade. Uh, the next one that came out was the red version. This was available through REI. And uh, this is actually a nice multi-tool because there's a lot of red EDC stuff. And so if you like to color coordinate your stuff, 
uh, this is a nice option for those that like a, a red look. So if you have a red flashlight or any number of different EDC items. So that's one of the great things about the about the uh, G10 models. I wish they would come out with a few more of these and make them not quite as exclusive. Now, originally, you could only get these through uh, this one through Bass Pro Shops Cabela's, but I think you can buy this one direct from Leatherman now, if I'm not mistaken. So this one is going to be identical to this one with the exception of the different colored uh, scales. Again, with the S30V blade, all the other tooling is the same. And this is a really nice multi-tool. I like the G10 models. Uh, and they were reasonably priced for, for the Leatherman charges, considering some of these others are really, really expensive. Then they have the, uh, the Earth version. So this is the black version of the charge. Uh, within GTN and you notice that one key difference to this one is that it has black oxide tools so this is a nice look this blacked out version you see a lot of uh, people do this it's a real popular color coordination with with uh, vehicles that blackout look so black rims with with black paint and it just it looks nice uh, this is the S30V blade again on this one and then all the other tools on this one are going to be identical to the other two with the exception of they're going to be black oxide. This is a very nice model here, and this one was available from Sportsman's Warehouse. I don't know that you can get this one other than Sportsman's Warehouse. Maybe in the future you might be able to, but all three of these, to my knowledge, are still produced. Well, actually, all five of these are, are produced here. Then we have the camo version. The camo version uh, is a nice look. Of course, uh, you know, a lot of the, the argument is if you have a multi-tool and you're in that kind of environment you're you know you're out in the woods or whatever camo is probably not what you'd want uh but if we're just using it regularly uh, it, it's a nice looking multi-tool this one comes with the 154 cm blade it also has the black oxide tools and the remainder of the tools are going to be identical so all these chargers are really nice it kind of it's kind of nice that you can go through and and really pick the one that suits you best. The next one is called the Woodland, the Woodlands Camo version. I don't know that this one. I think these aren't two aren't produced. This one might be. I, I really don't remember. Uh, it's been so long since I had to look for these. This one also comes in black oxide, has a 154 cm blade, and then all of its tooling is going to be identical as well. This one also has the gut hook and the knife blade. So it's a nice look here with the with the Woodland camo. It's a little different camo version. And now we're going to get to some of my favorite. And th th these next two are probably my favorite. So that we're talking about that black on black look with the G10 Earth. This is actually my favorite of these models. Uh, just in your more standardized version. Now you can get this one too. Uh, this is a black aluminum, just like the regular standard charge, but in black oxide tools. This one's also going to have the 154 CM blade, just like the standard charge model. And I think this one, no, it's not this one. Uh, that it, This one also has, I can't remember which one doesn't have the gut hook. Uh, but the tooling on here going to be very nice. And again, that black on black look. And it's really dependent on what you like but i actually like this one better than the g10 earth and this one let me show you real quick this one actually comes with a different case so this is the regular leatherman charge case that you'll get with most of these and then this black on black here comes with this particular sheath so this is eh, a little different i i, I kind of like that black on black look with the with this particular model but i think my favorite of these is well that's hard to say but from a just a pure appearance uh i actually like the carbon fiber version this was a special edition leatherman charge this is black carbon fiber more of a charcoal carbon fiber look and this one has a kind of a look-alike damascus blade uh it's a very sharp looking multi-tool just the I don't know that you get anything, and I, I don't know the steel quality of this. Obviously, it's not true Damascus. Uh, nobody's been able to replicate the true Damascus, but they've come close with different versions of steels. This one also has the gut hook in it. What I like about this one is that they anodized the aluminum on the frame here in blue, and I think that is a very, very sharp look. And then on the outside tools, uh, everything else is the same, all in black oxide. And when we open this one up, 
uh, you can really see that that blue. I just think that's a really it's a subtle color combination uh, for whatever reason I really like this look I guess it's to each their own again this one was a special edition model there's not very many out these out there I can't remember what the sprint run of these was I think it was 500 but I'm not entirely certain now along with that one when that one came out this one also came out so this is Damascus Blade 2 with the wood scales on it. Now, this is something a little different. And then this has more of a, it's kind of a gold anodized. It's not gold, but it's a gold look anodized to it. And this one's going to come with your regular standard blades. And I do like how they put that gold look screws on this one too. Uh, the wood is definitely something different. And it looks pretty sharp. And then when we open it up, you can also see the anodization on the scales or on the, the, the frame of this one, too. I think that's a really sharp look as well, though I do prefer uh, this carbon fiber version a little bit more. So this is a very nice multi-tool as well. Again, with the Damascus look-alike blades, and this one also has the gut hook. And maybe it was just this one that didn't have it. <laughs> and you know what? Actually, I got to check. Yeah. It was, which is something I didn't understand with this one. Okay, we'll get to the last one, to, to the NASA version, the Tom Sachs version last. Now, this one came out of the Leatherman Garage. This is called the Leatherman Dark Side. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go with the with the Tom Sachs version first because this one, these two were kind of special for the fact that they added in some different tools with this. Now, the one thing that they didn't on these two versions, for whatever reason, they did not put in that gut hook on the serrated blade. I never did understand that. It seems like they're taking away a really cool feature from these particular multi-tools. This particular one is one of 100 and this particular model is number 68. So each one of these is Tom Sachs. This is 68 of 100. Now these came with the S30V blade. Now as far as the tooling goes, with the exception of that of that uh, serrated blade not having that gut hook. Everything else on the regular tooling is the same. So identical tools from what we looked at at the originals. Uh, this one's a little special though because it has, this is the first one that came with exterior tooling or scale tooling. Uh, to accomplish this, one of the things they did, instead of having your standardized clip that, you, that would clip into the tool release uh, slot there, they added in the P4, P2, P4, I guess the free series clip onto these. And it was really cool how they did this because they, they kind of milled out the frame and then added this backer to it in order for it to secure very securely. So the clip on here is actually quite nice. Now on a wave charge, uh, that is, you're going to be more apt to use a clip than you are on something like Surge. So it's kind of nice that they add it in there. And if you don't use it, you can always remove it. Now with the scale tools on this one, so one of the scale tools that I really like, and this one also comes with a ceramic uh, bead on a, on a custom lanyard. Uh, this one is kind of more of a showy multi-tool than anything else but one thing again that they did i like the scale tools they put in here and it's something that i wish that leatherman would do going forward in a maybe not uh necessarily a a, a uh, you know a sprint run or a custom run of these but have this available on maybe an even more upgraded charge of your standard charge i think that would be i think that would that would sell pretty well i think people would like it so this is your carbon scribe here, and for metal workers, anybody who does, does anything with sheet metal or metalworking in general uh, will find that to be a very handy tool. On the opposite side, they have a ballpoint pen. This one holds a Schmidt refill, and so much like you get with uh, the plus scale tools on a Victorinox knife, having a little backup uh, ballpoint pen can be very handy as well. And then this one has uh, embedded in here is a set of tweezers as well. So I'll go ahead and pull those out. And I think these came out, this is the same tweezers they make for the style, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And we'll set that back in there. And then the last thing, and one that I think is very useful, uh, of course, I, my fingernails are pretty short right now. So let's see if I can get it out of here. Oh, goodness. I guess I'm not going to be able to. So let me pull that. Well, 
I might not get it. I just recently cut my nails and having all kinds of trouble here. Ah, I just not going to be able to get it. I'm sorry. So, but embedded in there is a little stainless steel uh, straight pin as well, and that's another thing that you get with a Victorinox knife. I like that. Uh, I wish they would add that to a more standardized version. And then with this one, it has GTN scales uh, with the NASA logo embedded in them for you know Tom Sachs and his whole thing. So it's a nice looking multi-tool. It's a very expensive multi-tool to get your hands on as well. And like I said, it's one of 100, so it is not very common. And then the last one is the Leatherman Dark Side. Now this came out of the Leatherman Garage and it is very similar uh, to the NASA version or the Tom Sachs version. So as it, with the Tom Sachs, it didn't come with the gut hook, but it does come with black oxide tools. So this is goes back to that black on black theme that we got with the aluminum, this uh, uh, the black version or black oxide version of the regular uh, charge and then the GTN Earth. So for those that like that look, and then this one does something similar to what this one did, but uh, it doesn't anodize. They don't anodize the frame in blue like this one is. I actually like this better. But what they did is kind of give it a two-tone G10 with blue and black. Uh, so it's a little bit different. Now, the rest of the remainder tools, they're all identical, except, the, again, this is going to be on black oxide. So this doesn't have quite the same amount. The one tool that they don't include is that little straight pin. Uh, I don't understand why they left it out of there. Obviously, it should be very easy to put in there. But this one also has the carbide scribe that comes with it, uh, something that I like very much. And the tweezers right there. And then the ballpoint pin or the... A refill holder so you have a, a ballpoint pen on board for occasions where you need to write something down so that's that's nice that they have that in there it's not something that i think i would find extremely useful but nonetheless so these are my 10 uh, the collection of 10 of the second generation leatherman charges that i have if i had to pick a favorite a little bug there if i had to pick a favorite of mine my personal favorite i like this one the best uh, i think that is a really sharp look that carbon fiber blue anodized uh has uh, you know i'm i'm not that big a fan of the damascus not that i've ever used these so these four here they will never get used uh the, in fact this is they're usually in their cases uh put away but I decided to pull them out here to kind of update this, this uh, my collection of this. This is my favorite because of the color scheme. And I really like that that Damascus look with the blue anodization. I think that is very sharp. It would have been even better had it include scale tools like this. In fact, if they were going to make a production run of one, I could go without the, the Damascus. But the carbon fiber scales here... Uh, on that blue anodize and then add scale tools and make that their premium version or their even their higher upgrade uh, Leatherman charge and that that would be nice uh, I like all of them. I've always always have liked the Leatherman charge It's unfortunate that they took out the hook blade on these two uh, but they have come out with some really cool looking models and it really is kind of dependent on what your personal uh, what you like personally as far as color scheme goes uh, but if it were me probably these two are my favorite uh, well I do like the G10 look uh, I still think I, I would probably go back to one of these two at any rate this is my collection of the Leatherman Charge series hope you enjoyed if you have any questions just put them in the comments below I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one